Good morning and welcome to Winescape TV. I, as always, am your host, Ditch Oakley, and we're very excited to have with us someone we've been trying to get hold of uh, into this country for quite some time now um, from the Simon Sig Wine Estates in Stellenbosch. It is Pierre Nokia from, uh, as I say, uh, from Simon Sig. Welcome to you, sir. Thank you. I hope you're not too tired. Have you just got off a big plane and uh, a private jet, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately not. Um, no, I've been, I've been in London since Wednesday, so okay. acclimatised to the... The cold, to the, the misery. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not. It's supposed to be spring. It's not quite there now. As you look out the window, it's not very exciting. And certainly, the backdrop here is not the uh, the rolling hills of Stellenbosch with the uh, Table Mountain in the background. Um, but we are delighted to have you here because, as I said, you know our lovely sponsors and friends of the General Wine Company. We. We've got this wonderful selection of wines which we'll be going through uh, shortly. But uh, I just wanted to have a quick chat to you, of course, because uh, um, there are some some brilliant uh, uh, sort, of, sort, of, sort of facts and history uh, with regards to Simonsig, um, sort of with Franz Milano, obviously being the the uh, I guess the the pioneer of sort of uh, sparking wines within South you know, South Africa and sort of the I guess the the, the cup fungal here is uh, it's one of the first ones uh, ever, wasn't it, from forty years ago? That's right. Um, Simonsig was the first producer of uh, cup classic in South Africa, as you. Know, we're not allowed to use the word champagne, so <laughs> Cup Classic is uh, is what we call it. Uh, and the Cops of Uncle was the first produced in South Africa in 1971. Brilliant. And Franz Milan, he started at Simon in 1953. Uh, for the first few years, uh, we didn't bottle any wine on our own label. We used uh, or we sold grapes and bulk wine to the mm -hmm. larger cooperatives. And in 1968, we bottled the first wine under the Simon label which was a Chenin Blanc, which, and it's still the most popular wine in our range. And then uh, three years later, in 71, we, we started making uh, Cup Classic. And back then, we didn't have any Chardonnay, so it was also made from Chenin. Oh, OK. How did yeah. that taste? Uh, I wasn't born yet, so... <laughs> <laughs> it seems like such a long time ago. But I'm sure it probably would have worked quite well, wouldn't it? I mean, Yeah, Chenin is really versatile. Um, back then, it was uh, up to 30% of the total vineyards in South Africa was Chenin. And uh, the growers called it Steam. Um, and it's still you know, widely used for brandy production, dry white wine, sweeter white wine, sparkling wine. Um, not really cup classic, but there are a few producers. So, so you don't do it at all anymore with the Pinot Meunier and the, and the Pinot Noir or anything like that? Yeah, it's now all uh, Cops, Funkel, Chardonnay, mm -hmm. Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. Mm, excellent. And do you think, I mean, of course, you know, using sort of the classic champagne sort of grapes, I mean, do you think it sort of has, has got any sort of, uh, sort of obviously not a champagne flavour to it, but I mean, has it got its own its, its own flavours from like going to use the horrible word terroir, which I know we're not used, to, we don't like using, uh, but uh, uh, we've got to use it. I mean, do you think it's expressive of where it comes from? I think so. Um, the idea behind Cup Classic is not to make something that tastes like champagne. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's the same method, um, but we leave that to the French. <laughs> you know, the, the terroir and the climate is very different. Uh, sure. So we have a lot more, I think, fruit in our wine. Um, the French probably has a bit of higher acidity because of the colder climate. Of course, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think it's something that's South African in, in taste. It's uh, it's really excellent quality. I think value for money. It's a it's a really. I good think it's absolutely quality. fantastic. As I said we will be tasting it shortly. Um, but I understand now that you've got to, over sort of the estates now over sort of five hundred acres under vine, which is which is fairly substantial. Yeah, we we talk in hectares in South Africa, <laughs> so we've got uh, it's about three hundred hectares, uh -huh. two properties. So uh, they're almost next to each other, one hundred and fifty each, and of that, about two hundred and ten is planted with vineyard. So the average size property around Stellenbosch would be between sixty and eighty hectares. So we have uh, we have a bit more land of our own, but mm -hmm. also because the family has owned the land uh, for for a bit longer. Most most of the new labels are are, are new brands and. People would buy a small property, put up a cellar, mm. and then they can source their grapes from various various regions. Sure. Which is a much cheaper way of doing it if you don't have to invest all that money into capital. But because the land's been in the family for a long time, we um, we use a lot of our own vineyards. We also source a bit of grapes, uh, some Pinot Noir for, for the sparkling. We source from uh, cooler areas like Darling and uh, Elgin. And then... Uh, Growers right next to us uh, for Shannon. Oh, okay, yeah. brilliant. And then, then also a bit of Sauvignon from cooler areas. Fantastic. I mean, do, do you all, because <clears throat> obviously, you, like in any of the wine region, there's sort of, you've got vineyards, 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 sort of, you know, sort of separated out, so, you know, maybe by a little lane or by a fence. I mean, do you all get on really well? Because obviously, it is a competitive <laughs> market. I mean, are you, are you friendly? Do you wave to each other in the vineyards? Or? Yeah, definitely. There's a big <laughs> camaraderie amongst the South African producers. Um, they all know each other very well. Lots of them, you know, work together at yeah. some point. Uh, Simon Sir, because we're also one of the older family estates, a lot of uh, 
quite famous wine producers now in South Africa, winemakers, started an apprenticeship or a sh uh, just a short uh, stint in our cellar. So we have a, a good history with, uh, and a good friendship with lots of winemakers. Excellent. That's worth. Well, it all helps, isn't it? Really, you know. Yeah. But that's all the competitive nature is. It is yeah. there to sort of help each other at the same time. Yeah, and we've got uh, associations like the Cup de Sic Association. Uh, Johan Milan, our winemaker, he was one of the founding members, founding chairman. Uh, we have the Chenin Blanc Association, the Pinot Association. So the winemakers all get together and share ideas of get, what they're doing. We we'll get drunk. <laughs> Later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said, yeah, as I say, it must be lots of fun out there. As I say, you know, they're, they're all, you know, you're all making you know, great, great wines. As I say, you know, and you were mentioning earlier before we before we came on air officially, um, talking about sort of the Chinese market and things like that. And now, obviously, the Chinese are starting to, instead of originally spending lots of money on top end champagnes and top clarets and Bordeaux, they're now uh, um, sort of going for sort of drinking wines and sort of, you know, sort of more uh, accessibly priced wines. And mm. so, it must be quite an exciting time for you guys. Yes, we've uh, we've been you know dangling our feet in, Ch in Chinese waters for for a few years, and uh, and it's, it's paid off. Uh, at the moment, we really focus on our top end reds, which is uh, so it's a good market for us. We've got um, relatively small uh, distributors, but we use one in in each city, mm -hmm. in each of the major major centers, and uh, and it's doing well. We visit the market once a year, and uh, and we see some. Some good growth coming from there. Excellent. And uh, so another thing we were talking about earlier is, is because <clears throat> I know you've just come back from Pro Wine yes. uh, in Dusseldorf, and uh, and we're talking about sort of potentially, you know, how that compares to the London International Wine Fair and, and mm. sort of where that's doing wrong and not doing right. But do you think that's it now? Because you said that you probably wouldn't be doing uh, the wine fair this year in London. I mean, is it something that you would look at doing again in the future if they changed their, their approach at all? We haven't done the London Wine Trade Fair for the last three years, I think okay. now. Um, because Pro Wine is in March, uh, and we see all our dis all our agents from across the world, uh, May is maybe a little bit short after. Uh, so we we prefer to go to the beautiful South tasting in September. It seems to work really well. I mean, all the feedback from that has been why has not been doing you know has been done more. Mm. Yeah. So this year we we won't do the London Wine Trade Fair anymore. Fair enough. You heard it here first. He's not coming. He's not coming. I tell you, he's not. Um, <laughs> so if you want a CPA, you're going to have to get a pro wine. It's as simple as that. Um, now, of course, we're going to be uh, trying some of these wines because obviously we're going to get these up on the website, etc. No doubt the website will be dangling its way under the screen um, as we speak. But uh, we've got a couple of days with you, Pierre, which is very exciting. I know tonight you're going to be uh, at, a, uh, at a sort of a tasting at the Anchor Bleu, right. which is in Bosom, uh, in Chichester Harbour, which is a fantastic setting, a lot nicer than where we're yeah, sitting we, here. We were there just now before we came to the Okay, office, so it's nice. Yeah. It's fairly nice, though. You know. Great sitting. Was the tide in or was the tide out? Out. It was out, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't park your car down below. Yeah, I've done that before about 10 years ago and my car was underwater. So, um, But for now, I'm going to say, obviously, thank you very much, sir, for coming in. Uh, we are going to be going through these wines. Um, but, of course, if you want to join us uh, at the Anchor Burr this evening or, of course, uh, at the Old Drum tomorrow uh, for all this uh, for all winemakers tasting, uh, Pierre will be there and obviously we'll be delighted to talk you through all these wines which we're going to be enjoying now but of course if you've got any comments or feedback do interact with us on uh, google on whatever it may be youtube twitter we obviously love feedback we love to know that you're loving us as much as we love you but for my now thank you very much Pierre. it's been really really good to see you thank you Pleasure. for your time we thank look forward for to you. the two uh, tastings coming on later and from myself this has been winescape tv we'll see you very very soon